is a totally impromptu music is a journey. This does not fit into any episodes, no side trips, nothing else. I just want to tell you about a concert I went to. Now actually, I'm recording this, what, May 27th? I went to this concert back on April 7th and I actually almost thought, you know, I'm not going to make a video for this because it's getting really late. However, uh, the other regular videos in the series are taking so long to put together, so I thought I'm just going to talk about it anyway. So what concert was it? Well, April 7th, I went to see Obscura play at a place called Cyclone in Shibuya in Tokyo. Now, first of all, uh, Obscura. Do I like Obscura? Well, let's see here. I have uh, Cosmogenesis. I have Omnivium. I have Acroasis. And the latest release, Diluvium. That's four out of their five studio albums. So yeah, I like them. I find them very interesting. Um, technical death metal. So uh, some really difficult playing. Uh, sometimes I actually I call it brain knot music because sometimes I'm thinking, wow, like the drums are doing this and the guitar is doing this and the bass is doing this and another guitar is doing this. So it's not just your simple, straightforward, growly, deep and sinister death metal. Anyway. Um, a little bit uh, about the story. Um, Obscura, they were to play with, I think, a band called Nucleus, as well as uh, Ginger, a um, metalcore band out of the Ukraine, who recently have been becoming more popular. Anyway, um, I went down there. I was going to meet a friend who was coming a bit later on. I went down to Shibuya. I arrived a little bit later, like after the start time, went in and um, I had to use like an e-ticket and we couldn't sign into the account or whatever. So it there was some hassle, but this guy helped me out and finally I was on my way in. By the time I got there, the first band was already on stage. As I was to find out, the first band was not Nucleus. For some reason they couldn't show up. However, it was this Australian band called Mason. And I found very soon, I really got into the music. So it turns out, Mason are a thrash band. Kind of revival of old school thrash. They're really influenced by the Big Four as well as a lot of the other bands in the California scene. However, um, I found their music actually was a little more similar to Sacrifice. Um, Canadian band who... I have four of their five albums as well. Anyway, yeah, so Mason and um, really enjoyed their performance and picked up their um, album here. I think they have two, this is called what, Impervious? This is their second full-length album. They also have a couple of EPs. I think they formed back in 2011. Um, really enjoyed this. Great old school thrash metal, wonderful album, love it. Now, the cool thing was, like, after the show, after their show, um, I went over to the back to check out their merch table, and as I was there looking out at the stuff, looking at the shirts, and then this guy shows up, and I look at him thinking, hey, wait a minute, you were just on stage. And that was vocalist Jimmy Benson who showed up there. And then I saw two more band members showing up there, and um, let me see, it was Grant Burns on guitar, and... Uh, the drummer, whose name I'm going to try to read here, Nonda Tatsuolis. I'm not really sure what background he's from. He's a big, tall guy, too. Anyway, they were really terrific guys. Uh, told them how much I left the performance. Told them I was from Canada. They asked. Um, they told me they'd been in Vancouver just a few months before and had played um, a few shows over there. Had a great time in Canada. So that's awesome. And then we took this terrific photo together. How metal is that, huh? <laughs> my only regret is that I had just recently got my hair cut and it was not behaving itself. Uh, rarely does it ever, but uh, yeah. Anyway, aside from the bad hair, great photo, great time, Mason, great band. Okay, Ginger, we're up next. Um, metalcore is not... I haven't really started exploring it yet. I'm still, you know, getting into all these other subgenres of metal. Like I, I said in previous videos, I was out of the metal scene for a long time and so much has happened over the last, what, like two and a half decades. So I'm still really picking up where I left off and trying to figure out what's going on. So metalcore is not really something I've really explored yet. Did enjoy Ginger's show, however, especially vocalist uh, Tatiana, what did I write down here, Shmeliuk? Tatiana Schmeljuk, yeah, she was up there, you know, nice looking young lady, tattoos and everything, and she's kind of smiling and waving at everybody, and she sings some beautiful notes, and then suddenly the death growl vocals come out, and she's, Aah! 
and it was really impressive. So, I mean, I made a couple of videos with my phone. Here is Ginger Live. Listen to this one. This is the one I, I record. I wanted to show my students who probably have never heard a woman do death growl vocals. Check this out. So after that, finally, the um, the main event, Obscura, came on stage. And of course, they were fabulous. Um, it was really cool to see them playing. But one of the things you notice is um, because of the technical playing, um, especially guitarist um, Rafael Trujillo, Trujillo, anyway, um, yeah, he was most of the time at his guitar, fingers going. I got a lot of shots here, though. Take a look at some of these photographs here. Um, there he is, Raphael, playing away. He was busy the whole time. Um, but, you know, really terrific, wonderful playing, lots of notes, and just going wonderfully well with Obscura's music. I mean, that's what it's all about, right? But we also have to take a look at bass player Linus Klausnitzer. I'm going to guess. Sorry if I'm not good at these names. But anyway, um, he was fabulous. He had a six-string fretless bass. And one thing I really liked about him was that he kept coming up to the front of the stage and he would kind of like look out over the audience, give a nod of approval, smile and step back and play. Or he'd just suddenly come to the front of the stage and just, you know, let go with the fingers on the fretless bass. It was pretty cool. And of course, there's also the, um, I guess, the guy behind the band Obscura, um, Stefan Krumerer. Anyway, he was up there, vocals and guitar, also sharing, like, uh, swapping lead duties with uh, Rafael Trujillo. So, great time, great performance. The only thing I, I didn't really get to see much of was the drummer. He was off in the back somewhere or whatever. Anyway, um, after that show, oh, let me just play a little clip from the video. I've made some smartphone videos. Let's put in one here for Obscura as well. <laughs> So after the show, um, my friend and I, we were hanging out and uh, turns out uh, he, he picked up a guitar pick off the floor. I think it was Mason's guitar pick. And then I looked around and I found an Obscura guitar pick. So that was pretty cool. Got that. Um, I missed it when they were chucking them out at the audience. <laughs> anyway, uh, and then after that, um, Linus Klausenitzer came out and we got to talk with him a bit and get some shots taken together. You can see here, there's me with the goofy hair. <laughs> and uh, then after that, uh, Rafael Trujillo came out and got to talk to him a bit. Th these two guys, they were really great. Easy to chat to. Just like, you know, meeting up with people who have common interest. <laughs> Never mind that they are fabulous musicians. It was really cool. And uh, yeah, after the show, we went outside and hung about for a bit. We were talking with um, particularly one young woman who was from Hong Kong, who is really a metalhead and was there by herself. So... My friend and I just talked with her for a bit, and also we got to talk to a few other people. And uh, yeah, then Mason came out, and uh, Obscura came out, and again we got to chat a little bit with some of the people. And then they rounded up everybody from Obscura together so we could get a shot together with the whole band. So here's me with Obscura. Pretty cool. So um, I had a really rippingly good time. I haven't been to a metal show probably since the 1980s and most of the shows I've been to were big stadium concerts so to go to a really small venue I mean probably the size of the venue was like somebody's large living room um, I don't know how many people were there and even though it was packed we still had room for a, a small mosh pit or mosh circle or whatever and it was just a real blast and I kind of got the feeling like everybody who was there um, frequently go to shows and they all kind of know each other and there were a number of foreigners there too as well um, I guess one other thing I want to mention about Mason was even though the place hadn't totally filled up during their show, um, Jimmy Benson, he kept telling us like uh, he was really glad to be there in Tokyo or in Japan and playing for everybody. And it just made us really feel like 
Mason were there to play for us and it didn't matter if we were only what like 80 people or something doesn't matter I don't know if it was 80 but anyway it was really good I, I really felt like I like these guys and like I said music was good bought the CD so um, that's it I just wanted to share that with you on Instagram under the Samyaku name I shared a lot of the photos there that I took I did some editing and so on um, I'm really pleased with the photos and I'm looking forward to being able to go back and catch a show sometime. I usually can't go because I work um, usually afternoons and evenings so I can't get out. Missed Voivod in January. Really would have loved to see that. But got tickets to see Emperor. Got this little flyer here. So I'm going to check out Emperor in November. A little bit bigger venue. But anyway, so great time. Wanted to share that with you. Um, be back with the regular episodes later on. As always, thanks for watching. <laughs> See you soon with another full Music is a Journey episode. Okay, ciao.